How do you feel about this arrest? Uh, sad. Sad because uh, <clears throat> it shouldn't have happened the way it happened. It was so avoidable. Why do I say so? I was uh, performing my legitimate duties as a chairman of the Medisec, who was himself under investigation for missing excavators. So once I got wind of the excavators moving out of my district, instinctively, I knew and I needed to take reasonable steps to have evidence. First, to confirm whether it's indeed one of the missing excavators which was being transported. And how could I have done that? I could only do that by taking pictures and videos. And this was a moving vehicle. So I had to go take videos and pictures. That's all I did. I never obstructed the police in any way, as was claimed in the police statement. Uh, it was only a video that I took. The first point of the video was uh, just after Ancobra, where I took the video myself in my car. And then I went, stopped my car, went to the other side to get the details of the excavator. That's all my interest. The whole action lasted for just one minute, six seconds. It was at that point that the police decided that I should, they should arrest me. So I had to run into my car to move to the, ne the nearest town. Okay. Because this was in the middle of nowhere. I, I didn't know what was going to happen to me. We were very armed. There was no confrontation. I mean, why would I even go and confront an armed policeman? So there was no confrontation. Even at the point of my arrest, I didn't resist. Except that it was so dramatic, they put handcuffs. And I was saying, you don't need to handcuff me to arrest me. For heaven's sake, I am a DC who is performing his legitimate duties. So if, for whatever it is, the police feel obstructed, for whatever it is, and you want to arrest me, they could have easily even invited me. I would have made me. In any case, I was already under police self cognizance bill because I had been arrested earlier on this same excavator issue. So it's, it's unfortunate mm. and it's sad. It's really sad that it happened the way it happened. But if you're doing your duty or you're performing your duty as the DC or the head of DISEC for the area, why did you approach them with facts? Who, what is the definition of tax? I mean, and I think that part of the statement, the police maybe have to, will have to come again. My driver, the four people that, was, that were arrested together with me, one is my driver. I don't drive by nature of my work. I have an assigned driver. This terms part of my condition of service. So I'm not supposed to drive. So my driver, is my driver a tag? My personal assistant that the police refer to as my personal assistant who has been, is a member of the district mining committee who has also been arrested twice in this matter. He's the first person to go to the illegal mining site and then stop the people from operating. He was also performing his duties, his legal duties, as a member of the district mining committee, duly established by an act of parliament, Mr. Francis Apene. Is he attacked? No. Then two others, Mr. Francis Jefferson and then Robert Amo. Robert Amo was the one who went, who I sent to go and take pictures, the very pictures that we gave to the police to, to, to enable them to retrieve Mr. Robert Amo. Another one, Jeff. Jeff is a police station. <coughs> Organizer, he spotted the excavator at Ezema and called me 6.30. All that information I give to the police. So these are people, they were not even organized. It was a spontaneous. Everybody was, because the police had earlier on issued a statement that I was under investigation for those business excavators, everybody became alert. So that as soon as they saw the excavator moving, the question that one asks is, uh, we're all looking for the same excavator. At the time, if I had been informed, that the police had retrieved and the, the, one of the excavators. I'm not sure I would have gone to look for evidence. I didn't even know that it was the police. Of course, I saw a police car, but they were not in uniform, and it could have been anybody. So I never obstructed, would never organize talks. My driver, and Mr. Penny, who himself is a subject of investigation of this matter. And then two others who spotted it, and they were on motorbikes. On one, one motorbike. Indeed, Mr. Penny, he came there on his own, in a, in a taxi, because he was also following to get to, of course, exonerate himself. My brother, you, if you have been accused of being complicit in missing excavator, and you see the same excavator being transported out of your locality, what will you do? Mm -hmm. Tell me, what will you do? Every rational human being will look for evidence. 
Because earlier on, when we brought the police to take over, to watch over the machines, because we didn't take pictures of the machines together with the police, it became their word against my word. So this time, I wanted to prevent, and we are where we are, whereby the truth, every truth is coming out because of the action to take the videos. Mm. That is what I think infuriated them and they took the action that they took. But, but if you say you have no knowledge of what's happening, why does your name keep coming up in everything that has to do with Galam saying in Galam Bele? Because I've been fighting Galam Say. I've been fighting Galam Say. As a DC, all Galam Say operation that has gone on, I've been the person writing official complaint. I've had to go to court to testify against Galam Say's on several occasions. So my record of fight against Galam Say is well known, it's well documented. Everybody's aware. But of course, in doing that, you step on some toes. We all know that Galamse activity is a complex activity. It's a, an underworld. There are a lot of people behind it. Look, if you arrest one Galamse, the number of people who call you to intervene on his behalf, you have no idea. And they cast across party lines, across religions, across the uh, sphere of all walks of life. So you should know that once you are on that mission, you will step on some toes and then the interesting part was that there was an attempt to blackmail me so that I could probably shy away from the fight. How would they do that? By accusing me of being one of them. I'm sure by now, in this matter, knowing what has happened, if I had been involved, I'm sure there would have been something that would have implicated me in this matter. So, in any case, I, this issue is not going to cow me into stopping the fight. I'm rather more invigorated because the dangers of Galamse, the effect, the negative impact of Galamse on our environment, on our water bodies, on lands, the degradation, is something of great concern that every Ghanaian should be concerned. You cannot make your money at the expense of society. If you want to do mining, go through the process and get, acquire a concession so that your activities will be regulated, whether small scale mining, medium or large scale mining, that is the way to go if you want. Mining is a legitimate business. Mining is a, it's not an illegal business. But the process of, of doing it. So I will encourage anybody who is interested in doing any mining activity in my district. Go to the due process, get your concession, register with UPA, Minerals Commission, everything, and get your work done so that nobody will come and disturb you. Mm. Other than that, we will not relent in this fight against illegal mining. That is raising his head in our district. You're creating the impression as though some people want to implicate you in this manner. Who do you suspect is behind all of this? I have no knowledge of whoever. I, I, and, and, oh, I'm not creating that impression. I'm only proving my innocence. Why did I go and take the picture? I went to take the video because I anticipated that the machine left. There was no way I could say anything and anybody would believe me. No, I was asking the question because you, you mentioned earlier that it looks like people, some people wanted to blackmail no, I'm you. saying that several people have written petitions to the president. But in the last two or three months, there have been about two petitions. My response to the petition has been like this. Like almost, almost like a project work, where I've catalogued all my activities in the fight against illegal mining to show that it cannot be true. But fortunately, now it's, it's all coming out everybody now people have observed your action for that long for the past four years i tell the one testifying that dc bonzo is not involved in galamse that is the one who's been fighting galamse that have an attempt to tarnish his image just because those who are doing it think that he's a thorn in their flesh look let me if you, you may recall or your viewers may recall that on the first of april there was a certain incident at the court in, in, in Crawford magistrate court where some arrested Galamseyes were before trial, and there was some riot which led to uh, one person dying. Right from the court, the irate youth, the angry youth, they came to my office to attack me. That I'm a thorn in the flesh. If I was one of them, would they come and attack me? No? So at some point, my whole life, has, my own life has been in danger. But of course, this is. If it's something that you have to die for, something that I will ready, it's a principle that I will, I will be ready to die for. Because illegal mining, the effect, the negative effect, is, some, is too bad for us to entertain it and tolerate it anyway. The president said he has put his presidency on the line to fight Galamse. 
how do you think what is happening in your district puts the president fight or uh, how does that aid or you know negatively impact the the president's fight no no is, is that a positive mm. i think i have worked very hard not to disappoint the president you know the president have had a lot of confidence in me my first nomination my second nomination all the issues surrounding it so it i should be the last person to sabotage the president in that fight that is why i have i have fought and i've promised that i'll fight to my last blood because I believe it's a fight that we must win. Mm. But it's not, I can't do it alone. It has to be a consented effort. Remember in this matter, and my very last interview on this matter before was on the, the pause, on this was station. And Bless was the one who interviewed me. What I said was that, given all the evidence that we have provided to the police, I was convinced that the police will find excavators. Fortunately, they found it. So it means that when we are doing something right, you speak with a lot of confidence. Mm. And I know that we are on the right course. That the people in government who are standing up to this Galamsi menace, just like the president put his presidency online. Mm. But they found only one. There are two excavators. Where's the other one? That has to be found. I believe that they hope the process through which the intelligence, everything that through which they're able to find the first excavator, the, sa the same process will help them find the second excavator so that we can bring the perpetrators of the, that, that heinous crime in our district to book. That is the only way I believe that we can get a result, real result in this fight. Because this issue has brought everything into the national conversation. This is a conversation that we need to have. It's very interesting mm. because the actors are so many. Mm. So we need to all of us come together with one resolve that this is something we need to fight and stop it. I'm sure with your involvement, uh, the way you fought this, this uh, uh, battle, you've got to know some of the actors. Who are some of these actors that we're not able to talk about? You, you should know them. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a matter that has to be put before court. It requires a lot of investigation. I have given my statement to the police, uh, the people now. So the excavator has been found. Excavators, uh, like any other equipment, have owners. So that which should give us the first lead. We have provided some other information of pictures of people who were found at the site, of landowners, of a house where we saw some of the items that were seen at the illegal mining. I believe we have given, but I would not want to compromise the police investigation by putting it on air. Because as it is, the matter is still under investigation. Even me, I believe I'm still under investigation. Mm. The fact that they found the excavators doesn't necessarily mean that I've been, probably the investigation will have to continue so that corporate but it's, it's, it's absolutely important it's absolutely necessary that we get to the bottom of this matter mm. so that we can all have our peace of mind as, as a people well uh, you heard the district chief executive of lm bella kwesi bonzo uh, who says he is not perturbed by what is happening to him in his fight against illegal small-scale mining he is saying that this is actually in line with uh, what mr president uh, touted that he would put his presidency on the line and that he is only assisting in the fight that he has a record to protect well